On this sunny, spring-like winter day, we gather in, gather into this place where we look around and see the sights of friends and, and new friends, well-known people and people we don't know well. We gather in to feel the love of community and to feel the love of God, filling us, inspiring us, and leading us in our week and in our lives. Whether you're here every Sunday or just today, whether you're joining us from home or in person, we are blessed to be together. If you look in your announcements, you'll see our announcements for this week, um, highlighting a couple of them. A lot of thank yous to go around. Um, thank you to everyone who helped set up the wonderful lunch last week. Um, what a great way to to begin our annual meeting by sharing in pizza and friendship together. Um, I heard people, I, I mentioned this at the meeting, I heard people laughing as they were setting up when I came in and um, as things were being cleaned up, there was laughter and joy as well. Thank you for creating that space for us to do the work of the church. Thank you to um, Sonia for, you were away last week, so I couldn't thank you last week, for the wonderful escape room that you, you led a week ago Friday. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity for, for us to gather together and have fun and share in the joy of community. Thank you to um, Catherine and Marion. Um, last, fr this past Friday, was the World Day of Prayer Service and Catherine and Marion um, took part on behalf of our church. It was wonderful to see so many people in our community gathering together to worship together beyond different denominations in a service that was created by the women of Suriname. I got it right, Suriname. And thank you to Stacy for, oh, there you, thank you, Stacy, for your gift of music today. Our Lenten lunches continue this week on this Wednesday at St. Matthew's Evangelical Lutheran Church from 12 to 1. St. Andrew's Presbyterian and the Missionary Church churches will be leading worship. We continue with our meat fundraiser, which was unveiled last week. The Spiritual Care Committee has, um, is leading us in a fundraiser for the general funds of our church with the Harrison Packer, Packing um, Meat Sale. Information's on in the bulletin, and if you want, you can pick up an order form from the back of the church. Also, there'll be a little spot set up downstairs if you have any questions or would like to start ordering. Please help spread the word as well. The, the meat I've heard is excellent and generous portions, and a generous portion of the sale goes back to our church. And checks can be made out to our church, and then we pay them. Adam, you have an announcement. Uh, so at the church board meeting last Sunday, we, uh, the Affirm Committee from, uh, that we have here at Grace United Church uh, presented our affirming process to the people that were assembled at the meeting. Uh, so if you haven't heard the affirming process really quickly, we're just going through the process to be uh, an accepting and inviting church for all faiths, uh, genders, uh, sexual orientations. Uh, we do meet every Wednesday of the, every month, on when, the third Wednesday of the month, I should say. <laughs> Try to get that out there. Uh, so in your bulletin, you do have a little bit of a, a guide about the, how we go through the process to become an affirming church. Um, and if, I guess I'll say, if you have any questions, you can ask anybody on the committee. If you have uh, more questions, McCall can also help us. Uh, McCall is on our committee to help guide us, our church, through this process as well, too. Uh, so if you are interested, I'm on the committee. Uh, Kathy is on the committee, Kathy Keiko. Uh, Doug Kaufman's on the committee. Lynn McDougall, uh, Catherine Dankel, and McCall. So uh, and we'd be happy to have more members if you're interested in helping with this work as well. Thank you. So this is a, a community conversation. It's a time of discerning together whether at the end it's voted on by, by all of us. Um, so this is, as we go through this process, please ask questions, please give feedback. Um, it is a safe place to, to, to share 
together as we, we discern whether at the end of this process we become an affirming church. That doesn't mean we take away from the work we've done to be inclusive. That means do we take on the specific designation. Thank you, Adam. Sally, you have an announcement. Good morning. So just a few things. Um, I, I had mentioned before we were going to be doing the Ukrainian Easter egg dyeing again. So our date that we have is Monday, March the 29th. And if you are interested in coming and making some of those beautiful eggs um, that you see in the magazines that are all really coolly decorated, you are interested in being, if, if you're interested in doing that, just let me know after the service. Um, I know a couple of you already have your names on the list. So that will be something coming up. It's with Sally Hortop, a good friend who uh, used to be from our community here at Grace as well. Um, we still have spots on our bus trip for those that are, anybody that's still but wavering, kind of thinking, well, maybe should I or shouldn't I? So there still are a few spots left. So you're welcome to uh, ask questions if you have any. And I think with our beautiful weather we're having, I'm thinking, I think our, probably our walk and talk group should be getting going soon. So I'm away during March break, but following that, I think we'll probably watch for the announcements and we'll probably get that going again. I also, just on the side, I had a wonderful visit with my granddaughter out west. For those that know that I was a little nervous flying, I did just fine. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Sally. And, and not in, in the announcements, but, um, but just a, a reminder that if anyone would like a visit at any time, um, please feel free to give me a call. I, I, I do visits, and um, it's always helpful. I, I try to phone people, but, um, but I, I used to tell my first church, if I'm phoning the list of people in the church and you're at the bottom, I may not get to you for a while. So if you would like a visit, please give me a call. It doesn't have to be just in times of emergency, or, um, but any time um, to share together, to meet, to, to learn a bit more about each other, to just be together and pray together. Um, give me a call. Also, if, if you are in the hospital, um, make sure if you'd like a visit to let the, the, the staff there know that you'd like a visit from your minister and let them know who your minister is. Um, sometimes word travels very slowly to, to minister. Are there any other announcements, celebrations, or sorrows? We give thanks to God for all the blessings that fill our lives and fill our community, for the strength that meets us in difficult times and for all the life that happens here. We acknowledge as we gather for worship that for thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. Their relationship with this land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, acknowledging their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. May God lead us into whole and right relationships. And we celebrate that as people of Grace United Church, we share in the life of this church as we strive out to live out our mission statement, that Grace United Church is a diverse Christian community called by God to live out the message of love shown by Jesus Christ. Let us share in love as we join in singing together. May the God of Grace be welcome in our midst. May we receive the power and peace of divine love. Come, let us worship with our hearts and minds and bodies. Let us become one seeking justice and compassion. Blessed be God who challenges, heals, and unites us. Let us be our burning and bless us be our vision. Blessed be God who inspires all things to be new. Let us pray together. Beginner of all things, begin in us again. Take these tired limbs and rouse them to dance your joy. From sunray to sundown, help us, O blessed one, to shake off our weariness, that we may know new life in you and offer it to one another. And we light our Christ candle remembering
Christ's presence in our midst. Thank you. And may the light of Christ shine brightly in our lives and all around us. We carry a lot um, into this place. We carry the burdens we've had from this week. We carry those moments where we, we know we haven't lived the best self we can be. We carry all the the things that stir around in our minds that weigh down on us. And here in this love of community, we can release them to God, and we can release them to one another. I invite us into a prayer of confession or a prayer of releasing. Let us pray. Oh God, sometimes we forget. We forget how quickly, we quickly forget the touch of our baptism, the connection to our calling, a wet hand to our forehead, cleansing, anointing, connecting us as members of the body of Christ. We are so often hesitant to respond. We forget. We forget the touch of a hand on our hot foreheads. We are reluctant to reach out to touch the blazing fever which rages among your people. Sometimes we are afraid, and so we retreat, pre-describing instead of soothing, looking and not touching, unconnected. We forget. We forget what it is like to reflect truthfully about ourselves. At times, we're unwilling to sit with ourselves, holding our head in our hands, hesitant to claim your possibilities for us. Reluctant to name the ways we've turned from you and others. Be with us, O God, as a parent who sits with a child, patiently, painfully, wrapping us in your love and care, even when we refuse to be touched. Send us your merciful healing. We ask for your grace and peace, and that by it we may have the courage to stay connected. We name in silence those things which disconnect us, those burdens which weigh heavy on us today. We release them to God as we sing together, Kyrie Eliaison. O oh God, have mercy. <laughs> the good news, the story of our faith is not about punishment, is not about falling short of God's love. It is about love in abundance. It is about grace in abundance. It is about knowing that we are all children and beloved of God and that we can live that divine image in this world each and every day. May we feel God's love flooding into our lives, helping us release our burdens and pains, leading us to great things. Amen.
I invite Stacy to share with us the gift of music. my God when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Christ shall come with shouts of adulation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim. My God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Amen, and thank you, Stacy. And if the children, anyone else who would like to come up, <coughs> sorry, come on up and join us, um, you are welcome. It is, a, it is a storybook we're reading today, so if you'd like to see the pictures, you're invited to come on up as well. How are you doing today? Quiet. How's, everyone, how's the congregation doing today? Yeah. Okay, we've got, we got some people awake. Um, I want to share with you one of my favorite stories. It's a retelling of one of the creation stories in Genesis called Big Mama Makes the World. Has any, have any of you ever heard this book before? No, has anyone out there heard this book before? It's one of my favorite books. It's the retelling of the creation story with God as Big Mama, a Southern United States mama. 
let us hear the creation story in a new way. Because maybe when we hear things in new ways sometimes, we hear God speaking to us from different angles. It's Big Mama Makes the World by Phyllis Root. When Big Mama made the world, she didn't mess around. There was water, water everywhere, and Big Mama saw what needed to be done all right. So she rolled up her sleeves and went to it. Wasn't easy, easy either. With that little baby sitting on her hip. Don't stop Big Mama though, not for a minute. Light, said Big Mama, and you better believe that there was light. Dark, said Big Mama, and there was dark just as big as the light. You two got work to do, Big Mama said. Don't you be fooling around none. Then she looked at the light and she looked at the dark and she looked at that little baby looking at the light and the dark, smiling and cooing. And Big Mama said, that's good. That's real good. That's how the first day went. Next, Big Mama looked around. Can't tell my up from my down, said Big Mama. Better have some sky here. And there it was, one big sky wrapping around everything, soft and blue as a baby's blanket. Wasn't much else yet, but water and light and dark and sky, all doing what Big Mama wanted them to do. And Big Mama, she was pleased all right. That's good, Big Mama said. That's real good. That's how the second day went by. Next day, Big Mama looked around some more and she said, got me some light, got me some dark, but I still can't tell what time of day it is. How am I going to know when it's morning, evening, time to put the baby down for a nap? Big Mama, she wanted to know all right, and anything Big Mama wants, Big Mama gets. That's just how it goes. Son, said Big Mama, you take care of that day business for me. Moon, said Big Mama, you take care of the night. Big Mama made the stars too, just in case old Moon overslept sometime. Big Mama looked at the sun and the moon and the stars filling up her sky, just in time for the little baby's nap. And Big Mama nodded and smiled, and she said, that's good. That's real good. That's how the third day went by. Next morning, Big Mama got up with the sun and she said, I need a place to put my feet down when they need putting down. She knew there'd be some foot putting down when that baby of hers got um, growing more. Earth, said Big Mama, get over here. And it did. All one big ball of mud it was, nothing much to look at. Baby liked it all right, just the way it was. But Big Mama wasn't finished yet. Need some grass to wiggle my toes in, said Big Mama. Some big old shade trees for hanging hammocks, papayas and oranges and boysenberries for eating on. That's how it was then. Just like Big Mama said, little baby sucking on a mango and grass and trees and fruit all over the place. Like somebody tipped over a fruit stand. Big Mama, she looked at all that, that earth and she said, that's good. That's real good. That's how the fourth day went by. Lots of folks would be plenty pleased, but Big Mama, she do doesn't quit. A job till it's done and done right. Big Mama looked at all the water on, and the earth and the trees and the sky and the sun and the moon and the stars, and she said, awful quiet down there. Better have some whales. Better have some birds. Better have some fish. 
That's exactly what happened, all right. Pretty soon there were more whales and catfish and mockingbirds and crows than a little baby could sh shake a stick at, which a little baby could do if a little baby wanted to, since Big Mama had already made all those trees full of sticks. Big Mama looked at all that action and she said, that's good, that's real good. That's how the eighth, this, that's how the fifth day went by. Big Mama was about ready to be done with it all. Making a world was a lot of work with all that laundry piling up and the dishes needing doing. She figured she better finish things off one, with one big bang. I need me creepy crawl and crawlers, said Big Mama. Some runners and jumpers, some diggers and divers. Everybody else wants to get created. That's here. Your, that, that's, this here is your chance. Hedgehogs and night crawlers, raccoons and garter snakes, rabbits and polar bears. That's how Big Mama made them all. One big bang. But Big Mama still wasn't done. Oh no. I'm lonely, said Big Mama. Who's going to sit on the front porch and swap stories with me? Not these creepers and crawlers, not these diggers and divers. They're good, all right. But no one, not one of them, can tell a story worth a plug nickel. And all this little baby can do so far is go goo goo ga ga. I need some folks to keep me company. Big Mama, she scooped up some of that leftover mud and she pushed and she pulled and she poked and she pried. And the next thing you know, there were folks everywhere, big folks and little folks, fat folks and thin folks, all kinds of shades of folks. And every one of those folks had a story to swap with Big Mama. That's good, said Big Mama. That's real good. That's how the sixth day went by with Big Mama and all those folks sitting on the porch and gabbing while the sun went down. Big Mama was ready for a rest, all right, ready to bundle up that little baby of hers in that big blue blanket of the sky. But Big Mama had one more thing to do. She lined up all those folks and said, this is a real nice world we got here, and you all better take some good care of it. I'm taking a day off to rest now but I'll be keeping an eye on you. That's what Big Mama said all right, and you better believe that she meant it. Every once in a while, when she's burping the baby or making cookies or rocking that little baby to sleep, Big Mama looks down and says, better straighten up down there. And every so often, Big Mama looks down on this nice little world she made, and she nods, and she smiles, and she says, That's good. That's real good. Our faith reminds us that creation, that each one of us, is made in the image of God, and it is good. That's something we remind each other of each week as we gather for worship. You're going to go downstairs for Sunday school, but before you do, we're going to do our blessing and our, pr our prayer and our blessing. So let's join together in sharing the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And if those who are going downstairs would like to pop up, face somebody in the congregation, raise your hand as a sign of blessing, and repeat after me. May God bless you. May God bless you. As you stay. As you stay. To hear God's message. And if those who are staying like raise your hand and repeat after me, may God bless you as you go to hear God's message. May God bless you as you go to hear God's message. Have a wonderful time downstairs.
I meant to sing the next hymn with the kids. Well, we'll, we'll do it together. We'll do the actions together, like a rock. So if you watch me, I might get the actions right, but we'll figure it out. Here, our minute for mission and our scripture readings. The minute for mission. Um, our gifts for mission, uh, a minute for mission and service support the important work of the Healing Fund. The Healing Fund is a, a fund that was set up by the United Church after they made an official apology to the indigenous people for the harm done uh, with the residential school system. So this is a story of how the Healing Fund is building resilience and hope in indigenous children and youth. The Pima Chickamac Cree Nation is a Cree-speaking indigenous community north of Lake Winnipeg in Cross Lake, Manitoba. The community initiated a three-day suicide prevention strategy by inviting indigenous and non-indigenous artists to their community to create art with their children, youth, and families. Using an indigenous framework called the Circle of Courage, the project was created to promote strength, resiliency, and healing among the participants by fostering their sense of belonging, mastery, independence, and generosity. Through various creative arts, such as drum making, storytelling, painting, singing, songwriting, music, and comedy, participants were recognized for their talents and gifts. It strengthened the participants' relationship with each other, as well as their relationship with adults and elders in the community. With guidance from the artists, the youth were able to build their leadership skills by helping coordinate the parts of the, of the project. Every evening, participants generously shared their artwork with the community, thus creating a narrative of healing and hope. Our gifts for mission and service support this and other healing initiatives. So we thank you for um, your part in, uh, in supporting the Mission and Service Fund. Uh, for those of you who do that regularly, we thank you. So please join, if you haven't, uh, please join us uh, this year, The um, Mission and Service Fund was $2 million short, so um, if this continues, again, uh, projects like this will have to be uh, probably stopped, so um, please join us and, uh, uh, with a regular giving. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of the Mission and Service Fund. Our psalm reading is from Psalm 19, Voices United, number 740. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the vault of the sky reveals God's handiwork. One day to speak to another, and never shares his knowledge with that. And this without speech or language, their voices are not heard. But their sound goes out to all the lands, their words to the ends of the earth. 
In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from under the canopy, like an athlete eager to run the race. God's law is perfect, refreshing the soul. God's instruction is sure, giving wisdom to the soul. God's precepts are right, rejoicing the heart. God's commandment is pure, giving life to the eyes. God's fear is clean, in, enduring forever. God's judgments are true, every one of them righteous. More desirable than gold, even more fine gold. By them is your servant warned. Or in keeping them, there is great reward. But who can discern unwitting sins? Or can see from my secret faults? Keep your servant also from the presumptuous sins, lest they get the better of me. the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. And reading from Genesis 1, 26 to 31, this is the uh, sixth day, can't quite compete with the mama story, but uh, <laughs> then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had done, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. God said, let us make humankind in our image. May you hear the words of my mouth and listen to the meditations of my heart, and may all of our reflecting be blessed. Imagine with me for a moment, if it's helpful, you can close your eyes. Imagine you are standing on a beach on a warm summer day. You are barefoot, feel the sand between your toes, warm from the sun. Wiggle your toes and feel the grain surrounding your feet. Feel that warm sun on your cheeks and the wind blowing against your body. Look out over the water, the waves, the children and adults playing, the horizon stretching out seemingly forever. What does it smell like? Is it salty or fresh water? Do you smell sunscreen? 
Listen to the waves crashing, the laughter carried on the wind, the gulls chattering. When you breathe through your mouth, is there a taste to the air? So how many of you are wishing you're at a beach right now? Maybe it's a little cruel to um, daydream about the beach on a March day, even if it's sunny in Canada. We don't even have snow to pretend that it's a white beach out there. Everything that you thought about, everything that we were feeling, the sights, the smells, the taste we were experiencing, were all through our body. Even our imagining involves our brain at work, drawing up memories and experiences and creating. Our bodies are how we live in this world. We worship through our bodies, through embracing one another in this sacred circle of community. We worship through our voices, our minds, our presence, and so much more. Our bodies are important. They're necessary. We are embodied people. Today we have jumped back in our Bible to the first story in Genesis, the first creation story in Genesis. Creation stories speak beyond the hows of creation and into the meaning of creation. The world has been a chaotic, soupy mess. And over the cycle of seven days, God has begun to speak creation into being. On the sixth day, the story proclaims, God creates humans. The story is beautiful and it's personal. God says, let us create humankind in our own image. And then in a short poetic line, their narration concludes, so God created humankind in God's own image. In the image of God, they were created. Male and female, God created them. It's worth pausing on this male and female part of the story for a minute. Because some theologians, some ministers, and some congregation members have said throughout the ages that men and women aren't created equally, and that women and women's bodies are shameful or more sinful, weaker or less important. There's a gospel called the Gospel of Thomas. Don't worry, it's not in our Bible if you're trying to find it. It's one of the ones that didn't make it in. But the Gospel of Thomas even concludes that Women need to change their souls into men's souls if they want to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Glad we don't have that one in the Bible. Yeah, it's kind of shocking, isn't it? Jesus says it in the gospel too. This is not what the creation story proclaims. In many parts of the ancient world, to speak about male and female was a way of emphasizing the whole of humanity because it was believed that these two made up the whole. We have been learning over the past 60 years or so a reality that some cultures have known even longer, that there is even a wider diversity of genders and sexes. So I think we can faithfully expand this translation, expand and translate this passage to our fuller understanding. In all genders and sexes, God created humanity. In God's image, they were created, and it was blessed, and it is good. All humanity. We are made in the image of God. And not because God can be defined in image or language, but because deep within our created self, within our body self, there is sacredness and there is blessing. And the story doesn't even try to define that. And a sad truth is that we can often forget this blessing. Christianity, our faith, has not always celebrated the body as blessing. Theologians have talked about the sinfulness of the flesh for a long time. The body has been abused in the name of faith through starvation, restrictions, even physical punishment. The body has at times been treated like a wild beast that needs to be forcibly tamed. 
At other times, it's been treated like a necessary evil that we have to endure until we die and we become free. The incarnation has even been understood not as a blessing, but as redeeming the fallen body. Women, non-gender binary, transgender people have often borne the heavier burden of anti-body theology. Layers of clothing, restrictions, and shame have often been piled onto the body, and the beautiful image of God in our created self can be hard to see at times. Encountering the body as blessing may be difficult for many of us. One of the most common areas of shame that both men and women and all people carry is shame about our bodies. How often have you stood in the mirror, in front of the mirror, and thought about what you would love to change about yourself? I know I've done it. I've done it multiple times. How often have you seen someone on TV or in a magazine or online or at the gym or on the street and thought, I wish I looked more like them? I've done it. To be honest, I wish I looked a little more like someone like Bruce Willis. I, I've got the hair down. <laughs> but, you know, I wish I had a more muscular frame and a stronger jawline. Maybe you had someone, I think we all have at some point, we've had someone make an unwanted comment about our body or shame the way we look. Maybe you can still hear their voice. Maybe you can hear a parent's voice talk about your body and use words like dirty or naughty. Maybe you've even used those words yourself. What would it be like if we were to look in a mirror each and every day and to hear the blessing of Genesis 1 spoken for us? What would it be like to look at our body and hear made in the divine's image, blessed and good? Would we treat ourselves differently, especially if we could remember this in our lowest of moments? In all honesty, I probably would treat myself better in these moments if I could remember those words from Genesis and take them more seriously. What would it be like if we looked at other people and as you see them, as we see them, we hear the words made in God's image, blessed and good. Would we interact with others differently? Would we respond differently when we hear a friend, family member, loved one say, you know, I'd feel better if I could only lose a few more pounds. Or, I used to be stronger. Now look at me, what am I good for? Or, I'm really struggling because I've been diagnosed with cancer or something else and my body is betraying me. What would it sound like to respond with Genesis 1 as our guide. Male, female, transgender, non-binary, intersex, tall, short, skinny, fat, dark-skinned, light-skinned, red hair, brown hair, and all the great panoply and a rich diversity of bodies God created. God created us in God's image and blessed us and said, it is good. Lent is our season of returning, of turning our lives once more towards God, towards ourself, towards one another, towards all creation. We are called in this season of Lent to honor and celebrate God's gift of the body because it is through our bodies that we live and we interact and we love and we grow. It is through our body self, that we experience the blessings of life, the blessings of a shared creation, the blessing of God in our midst. God blessed the body so much, our faith proclaims, that in a human body, God was made known in Jesus. Now, if that isn't a complete and beautiful affirmation of the body being good and blessed, I don't know what is. As a people of faith, 
We need to return at times. We need to move our focus and shift our lives and to celebrate the body as blessing incarnated. Because when we can do this, well, then we can have those difficult conversations that center around our body, rooted in our faith. We can talk about and act upon a culture where the body shaming and body objectification is all too prevalent. We can talk about and act against the abuses of people's body through verbal and physical harassment and assault. We can support those who are going through changes in their body, those who are struggling with puberty, aging, illness and disease, transition. We can do it with greater love, care and support, deeply rooted in our faith. We can talk about care of the body as care of God's blessing. We can have the deep conversations about the most mysterious, often frightening reality that at some point our bodies no longer function the way they are and we enter into the deeply sacred mystery beyond the body's death. We can find the language and the paths to live in a way of physically being with ourselves and others that is life-giving and healing. We can do that when we remember the blessing. So friends, in this season of Lent, let us turn once more, turning to the beginning, to look in the mirror, to look at those around us and hear the loving words of our sacred parent. I made you in my image. Look at you. You are amazing. This is good. This is real good. Let us return in Lent and celebrate the body, the blessing of life incarnated in each one of us in all creation. For we are part of a deeply sacred story. Amen. And let it be so. And let us join in singing, I am a child of God, and for 157 in more voices. pray together as we offer our prayers spoken aloud or in silence. Holy One, you fill life with goodness and blessing. We thank you for this day, for this chance to be together, this chance to reflect on scripture, this chance to feel your presence guiding and inspiring us. 
Help us, O oh God, to remember the rich blessings of life, the blessings of our body, the blessings of love and community. Help us to live out of this blessing and to share your goodness with this world. Holy Spirit, be with us as we pray. As we come towards International Women's Day this week, O oh God, we pray in thanksgiving for the achievement of, of all women, for those who have led the world towards a more just place, for those who have inspired and challenged, for those who have loved and supported. Help us, O oh God, to join together to work towards equality for all people. Holy Spirit, be with us as we pray. We pray for Linden United Church and Halton Presbytery, part of our Hamilton Conference prayer cycle. May you continue to guide and inspire that community of faith. Holy Spirit, be with us as we pray. We pray for Bill Petropoulos, for Bill Wilson, for Mikey, and for all the names now that we bring to you. <coughs> Holy Spirit, be with, with us. us. We pour out these prayers, O oh God, joining them with the prayers of all creation, trusting in your love, and open to the ways in which we can share that love with all around us and with ourselves. We pray all this in Jesus' name, as together we say, Amen. Amen. Friends, let's go from here filled with God's love, filled with God's blessing. Let us go knowing that we are beloved and blessed by God, made in the image of God. Go and share the love of God with all around you. Go to live life boldly and lovingly. Go in peace and go with God. Amen. Amen.